Hey there, this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I am your host, Nina Perez, and we are here to discuss life topics to challenge and transform your thinking. Let's do this. I am so excited because I got some swagger here today, okay? So I have Leslie M. here, and she is a former TV host and an advertising creative director turned training guru. So she spent decades traveling the globe with her award-winning company, Combustion, working with executives and teams from the top organizations like Google and Disney and PepsiCo, and that's just to name a few, okay? She's an Amazon number one best-selling author of Swagger. Unleash everything you are and be become everything you want. Cannot wait to get my hands on this book. Leslie has been called better than therapy, a rock star, ass kicking, and a force of nature, and sometimes a witch. So we'll get into that too. And I am so happy you are here, Leslie. I have been following you on social media. You're like, I I see you everywhere. I'm like always seeing your posts because you're super funny, you're witty, you're straight up. And so um, I was like, I got to get Leslie on my show. So thank you for being here, Leslie. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. This is so much fun already. (laughs) Good. I hope so. I am actually, um, the way I like to start my show is I like to, you to, I know I introduced you a little bit, but that's just a little bit of your resume. I want to know who Leslie is. So if you just let us, let us know a little bit about you and then we're just going to get into a really good conversation. Oh boy. How far back do you want me to go? You want me to go like way go. back, far- way back. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I grew up in Montreal in Canada I was a rebel from day one. I did not fit into any box. I was a free spirit, totally creative, super precocious, really bright, a big pain in the ass, untamable, (laughs) uncontrollable. Um, I uh, started my first band when I was 16 and I was into the whole new wave punk era, fell in love with that kind of music, which actually led me to moving to the UK when I was 19 years old to pursue my career. Uh, of being a singer. And I did that for many years in the oh, UK. Cool. I moved to the UK, didn't know a person, packed my bags and said, I'm never coming back. And, uh, and and went to live my dream. And I worked in the music industry for many years, but my music partner also happened to be uh, the head of acquisitions at a film company in the UK. I'd met him through the, you know, an ad in the music papers, a guy looking for a singer. And we, we partnered up and did our thing. So over the countless hours of being in the studio and, and, you know, and rehearsing and stuff, he would just give me scripts and say, have a read and tell me what you think. This made me fall in love with story and structure. I'd always been a writer. It had always been a passion of mine, a voracious writer and reader. And uh, opportunities came up to work as a script analyst. So that this, the job of a script analyst is to read scripts and write reports that, that, um, uh, film company executives can read to decide if they want to produce those scripts. So I started doing that, which led then to me being a script editor and a script doctor, which then led me to developing my own TV ideas. And I would, I would write these proposals and then I would get meetings with production companies to go and pitch the, the shows because, Hey, listen, if, you know, I was a musician still at the time. So if I could, you know, sell a show, I'd be like, yes, that's it. I made my day. Right. So on one of these occasions, I was in pitching my show idea. And whenever I do anything, I go large, you know, you got to go big or go home. So I'm pitching my idea. I'm doing the whole dog and pony. And the guy who owns the, the production company said to me, you know, you should be on camera. I was like, oh yeah, clearly you're a genius. Of course I should be on camera. And they actually hired me and gave me a talk show. A crazy oh, true so story. Neat. True story. The problem was I wanted to be White Oprah and they wanted me to be Jerry Springer. So uh. this was not, there was a big disconnect. It was not soulful. I didn't love it. I did a few episodes and then said, I want out. Please right. let me go. They were trying to sell me to Buena Vista in the States. I didn't want to live in the States. It was like a whole thing, right? Which is which is uh, also a lesson that don't take every opportunity that comes your way just because mm. it sounds good. If mm. it doesn't feel right, you don't do it. I was not prepared so to compromise my integrity or whatever. So, but then I figured, hey, somebody wanted me. Maybe other people will want me. I've got an agent now. It's all cool. And so I started to audition and I ended up working on camera for a bunch of years, which I kind of liked. I didn't like the the little mini fame sacrifice. Mm. You know, that wasn't my jam because people didn't know who I was. They kind of 
decided who I was based on the stuff that I was doing on TV. And I, I didn't love that. And I also didn't feel like I was able to make those truly authentic connections doing the work that I was doing. So after 17 years of living in the UK, I packed my bags and I moved back to Canada, to Toronto, and uh, talked my way into an advertising agency. I ended up being a creative director in the ad business until I realized that my role was to be a leader. It was to grow my people and support them and nurture them and to bring out the best in them. And I could not do it from the inside. There was politics and stress and client issues and all of the demands. And I came home and I said to my husband one day, I feel like I'm a superhero who's using her powers for evil instead of good. Mm. There's, you know, I'm not in my place of purpose. And I, I said, I think I'm going to quit my job and start a training company. And he said, are you what? Are you out of your mind? Leslie, you hate training and you're untrainable. I was like, great, exactly. <laughs> who better to start a training company right, right. than someone who hates training? Because I'll it. be the anti-training company. I'll be, you know, I'll create training experiences for people like me. So that's what I did. And that was 13 years ago. I started wow. a training company. I knew nothing about training other than I understood people. Right. And I knew that I had a ton of transferable skills that I could roll into it. I knew a lot about the ad business. So I started there. I started training those people. And listen, 13 years later, it's a, you know, it's a company that travels the world. We're wow. award winning. We've you know, we, we train Fortune 100 companies all over the world and stuff. And then there is there is the the swagger moment, but I'll save that for later. So that's kind of takes me so up. Good. Just before I wrote the book. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there's a lot going on here. <laughs> First of all, I love your personality, right? Because I'm kind of like that too. I, I I always was limited on how bold I can get because I had a child very young. I was like 15 when I had my son. Oh, wow. Wow, girl. Yeah, I was yeah. very young, but I wanted to be a good mom, even though. So I finished high school and worked and did everything. But had I had that not been the trajectory, I know I would have done the same thing. Like I would have been gonna, oh, I'm gone. Bye. See ya. Yeah. You yeah. know, because I've always had that in me. So I love that you said, I'm going to start a, <laughs> I'm going to start a band and then you leave. Like, yeah, I'm going to go do that. Yeah. But you know, what's cool is that you actually did it. Like you went over there and you really did pursue that. Now you said you went over there without knowing anybody or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so what was that first step like for you? Because it had to be kind of scary, right. To go into a whole different country, don't know anybody, don't know. Any so how were you just laser focused? How did you get that going? It, it was what I felt I needed to do. You know, I listened to my heart and I said, good. the music that I love is in the UK. I want to change. I want an adventure. What's the worst thing that can happen? You know, like, what's the worst thing that can happen? It doesn't work out. You come home. Like, what? who right, cares, right? right? right. So, right. Um, so I just, I went, so I stayed in a hostel for like a week while I looked for a flat. I ended up moving in with strangers in, in a flat. I went and found a job and... And then I looked at the music papers to try and find a music partner. And before I knew it, I had a world, I had a community, I, I had people and I just did my thing. Okay. I just, I think that people worry too much about the what if, what if, mm -hmm. and I go, well, what if not? You right, know, right. I mean, can, like, am I allowed to swear? Can I swear in this? Yeah. It, you know, bad shit's going to happen wherever you are. Good shit's going to happen wherever you are. Go yep. have an adventure. Yep. Like it's, it's, it, you know, this is not a rehearsal, this life that we get. Right. We get one Ooh, that's good. The and and the question is, what are we going to do with it? We don't, we, you know, you can get it, you can have a do over in the moment, but you don't get a do over for life. Yeah. And I, I, I never wanted to live with regrets or with opportunities unexplored or, or not having the courage to say, Ooh, what's that over there? Ooh, maybe I'll try that. I mean, so much of my life yeah. came as a result of me stepping boldly into my moment and then people are handing me opportunities, which I went, right. oh yeah, I'll take it. I'll take right. it. Even if I didn't know anything about it, because we all start from a place of not knowing. We all start from a place of nothing. And I wasn't fooling anybody. I didn't, I, the fake it till you make it thing does not work. We'll talk about that more after. Yeah. I never faked it. I went, oh, I don't, I don't know anything about being, you know, a TV host. Sure. I'll learn. I mean, it was yeah. a steep learning curve, but it was fun because right. nobody expected me to be anything other than I was. And I wanted to be good. You know, don't get me wrong. There was a lot of sleepless nights about me wanting right. to be good. Right. But I didn't have to pretend, oh, yes, I have 12 years of experience and I know exactly what I'm doing. I was like, I have no idea. People, can you help me out here? Right, right, right. 
And you just do it. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. You know, I think that's how people will relate to you too, right? Because a lot of people have that moment where they've just started, right? Mm -hmm. So when you say to people, I, I honestly don't know how to do this, but I'm going to give it my best shot and I'm going to do the best I can for you. I think people respect that more than you giving me a fake ass resume, right? And then when I hire you or whatever, you can't even do half the things you told me that no. you can do. No, and you bring the whole team down. And, and right. the, the smart money is on saying, looking at the people around you who have more experience, who have more wisdom yep. and saying to them, wow, you're amazing. Right. You're so smart and you're so all over it and stuff. Listen, could I, could I kind of sit at your feet and learn from you? Because I think that you're just kick ass and I really want to learn from you. Would you be willing to help me? Everybody says yes to that because they're like, hey, this person respects and values and right. recognizes right. what I got to, to, to bring. And everybody, that's, that's one of the ways that we validate our own wisdom and experience is to teach other people and show other people. Right. So it makes us feel good to be asked. And if you're, if you're someone who's like respectful and eats it up and acts on it and does all that good stuff, and then if you're really super duper smart, you turn around and you tell everybody how you got better and smarter and how this amazing person or these people helped you and taught you and you blow smoke up their backsides big time, right. and everybody's going to want to be the next in line to be that person for you because you're gonna pay it forward and you're gonna right. have generosity of spirit. It's a very simple human paradigm that right. most people think does not exist for some reason. I, I don't know why, yeah. but yeah. it is the simplest truth about who we are as human beings. Human beings are essentially good. Yeah. And what, what gets the best out of human beings is when we respect them, when we acknowledge them, when we see them, when we uh, appreciate them, when we approve of them, that's what brings out the best in us. The so ugliness true. comes out when we're assholes, you know? Right. Yeah. That's that's when yep. the bad stuff comes out. But if you're truly, you know, your intention is to to do good in the world and you ask people to help you do good in the world, girl, yeah. You know, you know, you know, I'm learning that. Right. Because I'm um, coming from a, a, a an old school mindset. Right. So we were born. I was born in a lot of lack and all of that. But the, the I was always that type of person who would give and give and give and give. And people used to be like, you better stop doing that. You know, it's, it's for self and all that. And I just never had that in me. But mm -hmm. now that I am not now that I am putting myself intentionally in rooms with the smartest people in the room, I realize that they are not competing. They're no. collaborating. They're collaborating. They're yeah. not competing. It's yeah. a whole different mindset. So everything you said, I totally, totally agree with. And I've been learning that even more. So the more I'm stepping up with these multimillionaires and stuff like that, and just hanging out with them and listening to what they have to say and all of that, I'm realizing there's no competition here. Yep. They're all helping each other out. Yep. And that's and exactly what you said, Leslie. Like if people would just get out of their stinking thinking, right? And get out of that poor and that poverty and lack mentality, they would realize exactly what you said. If you go up to someone who is uh, who is maybe doing something you want to do or aspire to do, and you say to the person, is there any way you could teach me? I'm telling you, 100% of the mm -hmm. time, they're going to say, heck yeah. yeah. Your job yeah. is to is to bring value to that experience, yes. that experience. You might not have money. You might not have right. You know, you, whatever. But you got to bring something to the party. You got to offer right. some value in exchange. That's right. what people are looking for. It's the takers that we go. No, thank you. Uh -uh -uh. Right. You don't. You don't right. get to come. You know, snack at my power buffet. That's not. Right. That's not allowed. Right. <laughs> but but if you come to me and say, hey, you know, like you came to me and said, hey, you want to be on the podcast? I'm like, oh my god, you're gonna you're gonna offer me and Swagger a platform. Cool. That's a gift that you're giving me. Of course, I will give you my time in return. That's a fair exchange of value right there, you know? So right. we, we both bring our A game to the situation and then everybody benefits. Everybody who listens benefits. You know, right. it's right. I, I think also when when because I'm the same, I'm a giver. I like to take care mm -hmm. of people. I like to be the one who's doing the giving. And I learned a really powerful lesson even recently when I was when I was starting the process of marketing my book. And I, listen, I was an advertising creative director. I'm an experienced marketer. So it wasn't that I felt out of my depth and it was really bugging me. Like I, I was sleepless nights and all this stuff. And I was going, what is going on less? What's bugging you? What's bugging you? And I finally realized that it's because I knew that I was going to have to ask a lot of people for a lot of stuff, 
a lot of help. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask, ask, have to ask for endorsements. I was going to have to ask for reviews. I was going to have to ask for social sharing. I was going to really have to go cap in hand and say, hi, really smart, lovely people, friends that I've cultivated over years and who are powerful right. and amazing and that I respect so much. Um, hi, could you do something for me? And I was really uncomfortable with that. Right. But what I, I learned, what I learned was, you know, my, my friend, Jeffrey Shaw, who's amazing, he wrote a book called The Self-Employed Life, and his book was coming at a week before mine. And we were talking about this and he said, uh, Leslie, do you not realize that you have been paying into the bank of goodwill for countless years so and, good. So you're, good. and you're asking for help? It's a chance for all of us to finally do something for you. And we want to do something for you. And now there's something tangible that's really going to help you. Of course, we're all going to step up. And as a result, I mean, so the people who endorsed my book, the, the amount of support, why do you think you see me everywhere? Because I'm getting all of this love and support from all of these unselfish people who, believe me, have their own businesses, their own books, their own things to do, but they're choosing to give me a little piece of their platforms because I asked and because I earned mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm, earned it, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's so important because what you're talking about is relationships, right? Relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like something that I connect with too. I love people, right? And I love like authentic people like that just like drives me. I love authentic people. So I don't like pitchy people, people who yeah. are pitching all the time. Like, yeah. why are you pitching me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like oh, that. You and, know, <laughs> and believe me, the people, the people who, who are more experienced in this world, they can smell bullshit from a mile away. And if yeah. you're coming at them to try and take something from, you know, snack at that, let a little, have a little piece of sushi from the power of faith. They were like, I don't think so. <laughs> like the it's not going to happen. You know, it's not going to happen. So you have to come, you have to come real. I mean, in this life, that is the answer to everything. It's like right. the big answer that, that people, you know, they resist accepting it. They kind of, they yeah. hear it all the time and they don't believe it's true. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. do not believe this is this is what drove me to write my book because I'm working in Fortune 100 companies. I'm working in all countries, all country, all cultures, all huge organizations, and people at all levels, CEOs down to new entrants. And it did not matter the title, it did not matter the level of experience. People did not believe that they could be who they really were and still achieve the success that they were dreamed of. They, they, dreamed yeah. of. they didn't believe that who they were was good enough right. to allow them to succeed. And so they're putting on this big cloak of bullshit, all right. of this persona stuff, their, tra their, their truth and their intention and their self-belief is trapped deep inside of them. Mm. And they're stuck in all of these things. And when I recognized that it was true, this was true of just about everyone I encountered, I went, oh my God, I have to change this. Right. I have to, I have to use That's all good. of my personal power to shatter this bullshit mythology that you cannot be a hundred percent who you are and still find massive success. It is an absolute fallacy. It's a myth. I have seen it disproven thousands and thousands of times. I've mm -hmm, seen it happen mm -hmm. before my mm -hmm. eyes. I've seen it happen in my own life. It is just not true. And that's what made me write this book. I was like, nah, uh, -uh. you're going to read this book and you will never be able to argue that case ever again when is your book out oh, it's out it's out oh, it's out okay yeah okay it's Wall Street I, I ordered mine i have to check mine out yeah. i ordered it yeah it's it, so you said amazon number one bestseller it hit the wall street journal bestseller list as well usa today bestseller That's swagger so is on fire it's on fire because it's real it's fire it's real. right real. you know <laughs> so take me through swagger so swagger because i know you have is it combustion right yes yeah so you have combustion where you are now, we work where you worked with these companies. Are you still doing that? You have I still combustion do that. Still? That's, okay. that's my, my, my company that kind of runs itself now. Right. I, and so I, that's I, training, right? Yeah, that's the training. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so, then, so swagger came birthed out of, tell us about that. Out of the training experience is exactly what I, what I talked okay. about all being in all of those rooms. And I okay. said, listen, I can't, I can't clone myself. So I, I can't keep doing this, you know, one room at a time. I right. want to I want to make the message bigger and I want to find bigger ways to, to communicate this. And I was already doing a lot of speaking at that point anyway, but I thought I want to focus on this because this is my legacy work now. You know, That's I'm not so right. young anymore. I'm not so young anymore. So <laughs> I, I am into that place where for me, it's legacy work. It's it's that the things that I'm doing are are impacting or I, I this is the dream that that it impacts people. Right. who in turn 
impact others and so on and so forth, you know, and that the message and the sensibility just lingers long after I'm gone and it still has an impact. That's what I care about now, you know, about that huge place of purpose and wanting to change the world because, hey, right. go big or go home, right? Right. Yeah, but you're like that, right? I mean, you've been doing that since you were young. You just yeah. go, you, you, you just go for it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm going to start also, a training company. I hate training. Yay. <laughs> listen, Nina, one of the, one of the, the smartest things that awesome. my mother ever, ever taught me or did for me was that when we were little, my sister and I, and we used to, we used to talk about the dreams of, I want to be a singer. I want to be a movie star. I want to be this. I want to write a book or whatever it was. She would look at us and she'd say, well, why not you? Somebody, mm. somebody has got to do that really cool thing. That's why awesome. not? Why not you? And she would wait for an answer. My mother didn't play. She would wait for an answer. And if we gave her some bullshit answer as to, well, I don't think I'm pretty enough or I'm smart enough, she would say, but, 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 but let me tell you, girl. And she would tell me why that was absolute bullshit. And as a result, my sister also is incredibly successful. She was the first, um, first female video jock on Much Music, which is Canada's That's MTV. So cool. And she was on camera for 15 years. And then she started this media empire after that. So we both just, just, you know, we were, awesome. we were all in, right? So yeah. that's the message you got to, you got to tell yourself question. You got to ask yourself is well, why not me? Yeah, so I, I love that. I, I absolutely love that. You're like inspiring me right now. I'm about to go to <laughs> 50 things after this, after this interview. So tell me about why call it swagger. So when, when you hear the word swagger, you automatically think of this show offy, peacocky, arrogant, in your face, kind of bloated <laughs> bullshit confidence, right? right? That's what you hear. <laughs> I've redefined the word. I've taken it back okay. from that negative. And, and my definition of swagger is the ability to manifest who you really are and hold Good. on to it in the face of all of that psychological crap that's going to come for it, regardless of the situation or environment. So it means you know who you are. You've got one face, one truth, one heart, and you show up with it no matter who you're with mm -hmm. or where you are or what's going on around you. And you are unshakable. You're like, you right. do you, boo. I'm going to do me. That is <laughs> That's badass. Awesome. That's the most right, badass. Right. Boo. And swagger manifests completely differently for each individual. It doesn't mean that you're, you've got that, you know, external thing going on. Right. Swagger can be really quiet and internal and centered. It can be introverted. It can be goofy. It can be serious. It can be, you know, super powerful. It, it's whatever you really are, but it means you're tapping into all of your stuff. You're not compartmentalizing. You're mm. not disintegrated. You're not choosing from the things that you think are good, but other people don't think are good about you nah, uh, uh all of you comes into play and as That's a result so you are so powerful because I, I i tell you one of the things that i've learned to be true is so much of the stuff that we don't accept about ourselves is really where our power lives it's really wow. the stuff that is wow. the most fabulous the most powerful the most you know fueled because it is it it's the stuff that that is different about us mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that we don't want to accept and it's right. that differentiator that is the most powerful stuff that's so good leslie oh you're on fire girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> that just um that makes me think of you know things i'm helping some of my uh clients with which is that imposter identity right yeah. same thing like they have this thing like i could see it right so when i'm talking to them I'm like oh that right there that right mm -hmm. there you know yeah. and they're just like Oh, but I don't know. I'm like, no, 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 that, 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 yeah, that's yeah. it. And and what you said, just confirm that because you're right. I think most of us struggle with that. I wonder what that is. I wonder if it's, you know, something that's, you know, have you tried to tap into why most of us feel that way against that gift that we have? Well, you know, we are, we are conditioned as human beings to, um, to fit into the tribe. It's mm -hmm, very primal mm -hmm, for us. Mm -hmm. We want to be accepted. That's why community sure. is so important to us and family and that whole tribal nature of, mm -hmm. of what it means to be human. And, and our brains were developed at, at a time when if we didn't get assimilated into the tribe, we could be left behind. We could be eaten. We That's could be so thrown out of the cave, you know? So acceptance is such a driver for us. And it's the way that we validate that we're important and that we're safe. Mm -hmm. Whenever we 
choose not to assimilate, our brain tells us that, that there's such risk going on. What if people don't accept you? What if they don't like you? What if you don't get this job? Gosh, what yeah, if you, you won't be part of this community? What if, what if, what if? And because of the, the way the brain is programmed, it, it has a better safe than sorry default system. So it will say to you, it's better to not take risks just in case, just in case. the risks don't go well. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. what it does to us. But that is not, it's not real. It's old conditioning. It, the, it was right. designed to stop us right. from, from getting eaten by tigers. It's right. not about the corporate world. It's not it's about you know, stepping out into the unknown now. It's not the same. And so, so, so the way that we, that we gain validation is external. And the way that we get external validation is through acceptance. That's why social media is so, so poisonous because it mm -hmm. taps into mm -hmm. that very primal thing in us is to be accepted. How many likes, how much people love me? Yeah. Do they accept me? And we, we, we want that so badly that they will, we will sublimate anything that we think might not be to other people's so liking. You know, so and good. so we yeah. vanilla ourselves up and not even real vanilla because that's cool. I'm talking right. about like artificial vanilla. We we just bland ourselves out just in case somebody yeah. might not yeah. accept us. And, I, and you know what happens as a result when you try to be everybody, you're for no one. Yep. And you cannot find your tribe. You cannot right. find oh, the people so and good. the audience. Yes. You can't do it. Right. So and good. the thing is, we cannot be for everybody and we shouldn't. I, listen. As long as there are people in the world who like a double mocha choca frappuccino with a steam this and a sprinkle of cayenne pepper, well, I'm good to go. <laughs> I, I'm good. And it's not going to be everybody. Right. But the people who like it, they really, really, really like right. it. They really right. Really like it, you know? Right. I, and I, you, know, you know, that that's so good, Leslie. Oh my gosh. You got me on fire over here. Okay. Cause I, I'm like listening to everything you're saying and it's so true, right? So I think that social media is true. It's done two things. You, it's either become poisonous to you mm -hmm. or it has actually helped you find your tribe Yes. because when you're a part of a family that does make you like the, feel like the black sheep, right? It yeah. kind of like, you kind of, yeah, you kind of don't feel like you always fit in. You know, you always feel like you're, you, they always think, oh, you just think you're better than us. Or you just think you're this. You, and then you start to artificially vanilla yourself down. Right. Yeah. But then when you start to like step into yourself, maybe because I'm, I'm like in my late forties, I'm like, fuck this. I'm doing yeah. it. You yeah. know, <laughs> excuse yeah. my language, but that's yeah. what I'm doing. Right. So when I, when I'm doing that, I'm realizing that now I'm finding the true people that yeah. really get me, yeah. you know, do you find that as well? Oh, totally. Totally. I mean, the, the, you know, I know that I'm not for everyone and I'm so right. comfortable with that. That's totally fine. But yeah. the, the thing that, that happens if is the, the messages that you got when you were younger about, about, you know, who you are, you can either carry that as a burden or you yeah. can take that and turn that into your strength. You know, when, mm -hmm. you know, when I was little, I was always told that it was too much. Let's say you're too much. You're too yeah. big. You're too loud. You're too passionate. You're too this. You're too that. You know, dial it down. And my answer, like yours, was fuck that. I'm not right. doing it. It's not going to happen, right? And so I, what right. what I learned was that so that was going to be good for some people, and it was not going to be good for others. Right. And so by being my hundred percent authentic self all the time, the good news was I found out really quickly really quickly yeah because either oh, they yeah. were in or they were out and <laughs> yeah. if they were in right. i knew that they were accepting and loving and respecting the real me right. so i didn't live in fear i didn't live in fear that's of being good. found that's out good. i didn't live in fear of having to behave certain ways to be accepted i was like oh no no tell me straight up you know if you, if you don't like this i'm not changing for you just right. so you know so either either you're on board on the leslie train or you're right. not because <laughs> i got to tell myself that i'm the big prize like if, right. if, you, if you get to be my friend yeah, you're lucky because right. i'm awesome i'm right. a great friend i'm super loyal i'll do anything for you i'll cut a bitch if i have to right I'll, I'll hold your head while you barf i'll do it <laughs> so funny me too yes but, yeah. but if you, if you are judging me or if you are trying to change me or whatever, you don't get all that good jelly. You don't get yeah. it. So it's like, I don't, I love it. You got, you're full of swagger, girl. Oh, you yeah. are full of it. I love it. Oh, I so connect with you right now. <laughs> um, I, I love all of what you said and it's so true. And I, you know, I realized, you know, like I said, I'm in my late forties, but it, you know, maybe it's about a good 15, 
20 years ago that I really just said, F this, I, I can't do this, right? Because mm -hmm. when you're struggling with like depression and anxiety and all of that, it's because you're not walking yes. in who you really are. Yes, right? girlfriend. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. You, you talk to people who have come out of that dark place mm -hmm. and you ask them about what they learned from it. And they'll tell you exactly what you and I just said. Mm -hmm. I learned that I can't be for everybody, that I, I've got to stop trying to live everybody else's life and live my own, yeah. that I can't please people, all that I'm not being true to myself. I'm not being in my place of purpose. I don't love myself. I don't accept myself. All of that stuff. That's that's what you find on so the other good. side of that. Yeah. So it's like, what, what, what are you waiting for? Right. You know, if I, you're going to get mean, there eventually. You're going to get yeah. there eventually or you're going to die. You, you know, know what I mean? You're going to do or you're already dead or you're, you're already dead, dead and you're song. already dead yeah. exactly yeah. i already said that you know fear is going to kill you before you die yeah you know so yeah. just either you're going to hate on yourself to the point where you have yep. no life or you literally have no life right or or you're you're not going to learn how to be alive you know as right. i said before this is not a rehearsal this right. is we, you only get I know. one that's go that's stuck to me i know and, and let me tell you nobody else will tell me how i'm going to live my life this is right. my life right I, so you know, good not so happen. good and and I mean, and there's something to be said about that, Leslie, right? There's a lot of respect that comes with that because when somebody hears your story, reads your book and sees what you're doing, they realize, well, you can say that shit because you've done it, right? Uh -huh. You've owned it and you've done it, right? And, listen, and so, my, yeah. My book is not just about me. I mean, there's a couple of little right. stories here and there. Right. It is about the hundreds and thousands of people that I've worked with over 13 years. Mm -hmm. It's their swagger stories, you know? Right. So like, because I come from a training background, I did not want this book to just be inspirational. That was not going right. to be enough for me. I wanted it right. to be hardcore, hold your hand through a process and methodology. That's good. To, to let you work through your swagger blockers and unleash your swagger drivers. It had to be practical, pragmatic, doable, because if right. it was just aspirational, it's like, you, get, you know, you get someone all excited and then you say, well, now off you go. And they go, well, what do I do now? <laughs> right. No, no, this book shows you what to do, it's how so to do good. it. So and then good. tells you the stories of people who have experienced this kind of swagger revolution and wow. what happened to, to their own experiences in their own words. You know, I'm, I don't make this shit up. This, these are true stories of, of people who, who discovered that, that there was something else waiting for them on the other side of, of their, of their swagger, you know, that they could step yeah. into that place and magical, amazing things would, would happen for them. And they, it does. Trust I'm so excited to get this book. I'm going to get a couple copies. I already have a few people in my mind on who I want to get this book for. So where is Swagger going from here, right? Are you doing like masterminds or something? Because you should. Yeah. Okay. So, so because I've spent so much time working in the corporate, like going into corporations and, and doing training, I, I've always felt really badly that, 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 you know, the average person who's not attached to a big corporation couldn't get access to this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting a, a, like a, you know, a consumer based swagger program. That's going to be a whole bunch Good. of things. It's going to be part training, part mastermind, part group work, part, you know, part webinars, part kino, part all kinds of stuff. So I'm working on that. Good. And I'm also working on a swagger accreditation for business and life coaches so they can Go bring ahead, the girl. swagger to their clients so we can really create that swagger revolution That's and all of that awesome. legacy work so i have a i have the book has a 40 page workbook that comes along with it there are tons of exercises in the book but the book's so pretty wow. if you didn't want to mess oh, it up i know the book is pretty yeah. and then um <laughs> so i created a 40 page workbook and i so i pulled out every exercise plus i added a whole bunch of bonus exercises wow um, so people can even work on it like that if they if they choose to but but, um, but I want to create, I really do want to create a swagger revolution. I do a lot of speaking and that's, that's fun and great, but I want to, I want to be with people while they do the work. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm glad you said that. And I'm, I'm assuming we can find that when we start following you all over the place, right? Cause you are all over the place. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can, you can actually go to, it. If, if you want, if you're interested, if any of your listeners are, are interested, even just theoretically, what I did was I set up, um, a, a site, uh, it's called it's swaggerprograms.com. And if you're someone who like, who is just interested, no commitment, just give me your email address. And then when it happens, I'll let you know. And anybody who's on that list gets a 
special introductory price because I want to make it super affordable. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's a little box that, that you can tick that says, hey, do you want me to interview you about what you'd like to see in this program to make sure that I'm I'm fulfilling the needs mm -hmm, of what mm -hmm. people are telling me that they want from it? So no, there's no, you know, um, no obligation in any way, shape or form. I'm building it for you guys. So right. I'd love to have your input and then you get first crack at it should you be interested. Right. That's amazing. Do you, uh, do you have a, like a launch date on this? I don't, I don't. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I just launched the book on May 10th. Right. right. So it's like, whoo, catch the breath. Yeah, no, breath. I agree. I agree. You it's know? just, it's too awesome. Yeah. Right. You so know? that's why I'm like, I hope you're not leaving this at a book because no, no. you're too I'm, awesome to do that. <laughs> as of tomorrow, I start recording the audio book tomorrow. So that's Good fun. I got, that, that's I got that awesome. coming up. Yep. Yeah. So that's going to happen too. So it's like, I've got this big, these are big, juicy projects, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you want to do it right. And yes. then I'll go, you know, I'll go large with it and, you know, take over the world. That's, right. that's the next, <laughs> that's the next thing. Are you in Canada still? I am in Canada. Oh, yeah. you are. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, I've, met, I've been meeting so many amazing people in Canada. This is why I love like all these Zoom meetings and this, the way that I can do this podcast and, and uh, YouTube channel now, because I get to meet people like you and you're like on the other side and we can still meet. It's, I know it's amazing, it's amazing right? It yeah, really is. It really is. It's the opened world up a gotten, world. Yeah, it's yeah. gotten really, it's, it's gotten, the world's gotten really small and a really yeah. interesting way this past year you know yeah i think we're i think we're far more real i think we speak our truth far more i think yeah. the curtain the illusion has been peeled back you know yeah. we've seen it to people's homes and their their kids and their dogs are barking and people are sitting in their underwear and the right. bed is not made and they look a hot mess and they're like oh fuck it i'm my hair's in a ponytail i don't care whatever <laughs> right all of those things it's like yep and you're still doing good you know everybody's yep. all yep. good and so i yep. think we we have a desire to connect meaningfully more often and at a whole different level. I think that's yeah. what's happened. That's the upside, yeah. the one upside of this stupid pandemic. <laughs> the one, the one upside what for upside. sure. Yeah, it has been, a, it's, it's been an amazing upside. I, I, for me anyway, I, I'm not a person that looks at everything negative. So I always try to look at things as, okay, what do we get out of this? What do we learn out of this? And I learned a lot about myself. This is why I relaunched uh, Straight Talk in an in a interview format. It's picking up and growing very quickly, which is great. And I'm building community, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm connecting with people like you and I'm just constantly, and I, and I love actually supporting people. Like that's really like a driver for me, right? So when I see you and I met you and I saw Swagger and I'm like following you all the time. So I think you're just <laughs> awesome. I think you're awesome. Your energy, your video, Videos are hilarious, so I oh, have listen, to follow you. You got like this is another <laughs> another thing I've learned in this life is you 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 know it, it's important to take what you do really seriously, yeah. but you cannot take yourself that seriously. Right. Like I was when when I found out that I that I'd made all of these these amazing book lists, like Wall Street Journal and USA Today. Shut up, Amazon number one. Shut up. So what did I do to celebrate? I got into the bath, and I made a video. I don't know if you saw the video from my bathtub, <laughs> where I was like, so what do yeah. you do to celebrate? I don't know. You get in the bath and I'm splashing around in the bath. I'm like, okay, okay. okay. Well, yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's swagger. It's all good, you know, because you, you know, you, you, you never, the, the, it would be the worst thing in the world if anyone ever thought that I wasn't approachable. You know, if they couldn't just connect with me and go, hey, girl, talk to me, ask me things, whatever. Course, I am right. the most approachable person in the world. Right. I will never do that glossy, shiny bullshit. You know, there's enough right. of that me already because right. you know because that's what that's what pr is and all that kind of stuff but the the all of the stuff that i'm in control of you get you get to use your straight up a straight, straight <laughs> up no sugar added real right that's hilarious, oh, Leslie. Sorry. That is awesome. Well, before I let you go, I know my audience is going to want to follow you. So just give us all of your, your social media places and all that so we can follow you, please. So uh, Instagram, if you want to see me in the bath, you can follow me at, at Leslie M Speaks. I'm going to spell it for you because people get that wrong. So it's L-E-S-L-I-E-E-H-M Speaks. And uh, I'm on LinkedIn a ton. I'm at Leslie M. I'm on Twitter at Leslie M. Facebook at Leslie M. Speaks. And right. uh, you can find me at lesliem.com. You can check out the book. It's swaggerthebook.com. Uh, and you can pick up the book anywhere. It's, it's all retailers have it. You can get it everywhere. 
Oh yeah, getting it for sure. And now you said um, earlier, you said it was something else. It was Swagger Swaggerams, SwaggerPrograms.com. Okay, it's great. just I just created a landing page as I'm working behind the scenes to figure out right. what the program looks like. So please do, you know, sign up. As I said, there's no zero obligation. It's just, hey, it's basically, hey, let me know when you got something. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's the purpose of it. So you know. This is so wonderful. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us today because this was like most fun conversation. This was so much fun. Um, and you really just gave me a lot to think about, especially I, I just loved your line about, you know, life is not a rehearsal. And that just that's going to stick with me because I, I love words and I love, you know, phrases that stick. And that's that's true. Right. Because I, it's, I, I'm always like double thinking what I should be doing because I'm, I'm a recovering perfectionist, you mm -hmm. know, so I keep trying to stop doing that and you saying that just hit me in a in a real spot right now so mm -hmm. thank you for that Listen, Leslie. you get it done and you move on yeah, that's what life yeah. is you get it done and you move on that's right well we're not even promised tomorrow so all this you know waiting for what right yep that's right so that's right yeah so thank you so much for being here and guys thank you so much for listening don't forget to subscribe make sure you click that little bell so you don't miss a video try to leave us a review so that we can keep growing this channel i want to thank leslie and thank you guys for being here until next time Make sure that you visit our website at Straight Talk No Sugar Added, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes and Stitcher or anywhere you listen to your podcast or on YouTube so you'll never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about our show, that would be awesome too. If you like this show, you might want to check out our book as well. It's Hit Me With Your Best Shot, How I Overcame a Hard-Hitting Life. I am Nina Perez, and I am here for you. If you are looking for private coaching, make sure that you email me at hello at straighttalknosugaraddit.com. Until next time.